Yeah. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Primera. How are you? I'm great. And you? Very nice to see you. I think we can start. Okay. Yeah, I think we can start. Um, it's such a beautiful Monday where I am in Kampala. I hope everyone is having a nice day wherever they are. Today we are being joined by Pamela Babirukamu. And um, she is here to give us something interesting for today. Uh, she's a team lead at Evolving Woman. And under Evolving Woman, they have um, three sets of things they do. They do ESA, they do uh, She Ignites, and they do Cat Talks, three things. Now, Ezra is a beautiful word in Hebrew, which means strong and supportive. You're very welcome today. I will be looking out for amazing questions and comments in the chat as uh, Pamela is taking us through what Ezra really is and how we can all benefit from Ezra. Uh, you're very welcome, Pamela. Please blow us away. I'm also very, um, I'm very expectant today to listen to you. To you. I have not had the chance, but from today, I am booking, I'm buying a book today. I'm buying your book today. I am going to make sure that I actually understand so much more about Ezra. The last couple of days, okay, the last one week have been. The list here are going to really benefit from it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Primera. I am really excited about your introduction and I'm happy that you're buying my book. Thank you. Um, for those who do not know, I'm actually an author and I've written a book about my life, Beaten Not Crushed. That's a book everyone must buy. So those of you interested, kindly find it in uh, Aristoc or the book point, or you can join Ezra and you will get a copy as part of the package. So I'm just going to start my presentation. Very excited to be here. Um, one of the reasons why I'm really excited is the, that we have always wanted to partner. We've always wanted to partner with G4G and this has been a, ex, a great opportunity thanks to one of the ladies who has been the bridge, uh, Crystal Kabajara. Thank you very much for the good job you have done. I'm excited to be here because we've been looking forward to working with G4G and uh, being able to really empower women together. So we look forward to that. Um, so today I've been asked to talk about how would you like to discover you and basically interest you all in Ezra. Now, um, I'll talk more about Ezra, but I needed to give you a small background of why. I know many of you have so many whys, you're wondering why am I here? Why am I going through the things that I go through? Why, 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 why? And many of you want to know the why, why you're actually here. And um, I just needed to give you a snippet of how we ended up doing Ezra or coming up with Ezra. Now, um, my, my co-founder, Maureen Otiek and I had been, had gone through a series of, or a number of, 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 of um, adversities. And uh, we had pulled out of it and come out victorious and thought, what can we do to share with the women at least a bit about our lives and inspire them to be able to fight on? Partly because I had been, I had been made a counselor for women when I didn't have any counseling skills. It's just because I had been through a number of adversities and I had been able to um, come out of it victorious. Um, I will say, they say you come out of it without smelling smoke. Well, I cannot say that you can come out of it without smelling smoke. I'm still dealing with the smoke. I'm still trying to rid myself of the smoke. If you're interested in knowing what the issues I have been through, definitely uh, join Ezra or buy the book, Beaten Not Crushed. And uh, one of the, the, the common things we had gone through with my co-founder, Moreno Tiek, was that I had lost my brother in that series of adversities. And for me, grief, no one had ever told me, of, prepared me for grief. And uh, she, my brother was married to Maureen. 
and my brother passed on, leaving us really devastated. Somehow we managed to fight the battle together and uh, we thought, why don't we just come up with an event where we can encourage women on Women's Day? So we came up with this, we call it our one hit wonder. Uh, a Night with a King was um, an event that we organized in 2018. And we came up with this organization, with this, with, with this uh, event, basically to encourage women on Women's Day that you can actually bounce out of adversity. And at the end of it, women were like, okay, now that you have told us your story, we also have our stories. How do we come out of it victorious as well? And guess what? None of us had any skills of counseling. None of us knew what to do. So we set out to look out for this one, one um, like use this one uh, tool that could actually help us to help the women. And that's how we go on a fact-finding mission. Where can we get something? Could we have to study counseling? What do we need to do? And we landed on this, um, 10 week experience called EZA that was being uh, marketed and sold by Transform Nations Kenya. So we managed to get this experience and we were the first to bring it here in Uganda. So that is how we end up with the evolving woman. So the evolving woman is having EZA as one of its activities. And EZA was the first activity that we came up with. I'll give you much more info about EZA with time. I hope that I can actually try and keep time. Uh, so I will tell you more about EZA. Um, so uh, this is just a bit about the Evolving Woman. So Evolving Woman is a platform to equip women with skills to live life to their full potential as God intended it. So each of us was created to reach, to hit the ceiling and even go beyond the ceiling. Every one of us has got the ability to actually reach our full potential. But what is it that is stopping us? And so for us as evolving women, we said, what is our value proposition? And it's basically to equip women with skills to live life to their full potential. And our niche basically is confidence building and self-awareness. So we believe that if a woman is confident and she's self-aware, the sky is only but the limit. So what we're going to do in the next few minutes is if you have any question, we will post it in the comment section and Primera will uh, help me through the question answer session at the end of it all. I'll try to go through my, um, my, my slides quickly so that we can have a time for uh, discussion. So uh, Primera was kind enough to say three of the activities that we've been having as Evolving Woman. We've got many more activities and I would like to just highlight them. So EZA is our 10 week self-discovery journey. We also have monthly She Ignite series. So the She Ignite series, we get a chance to um, showcase the women who discovered their purpose and are living it out. Because it's one thing to discover it, it's another to actually go ahead and do something about it. So these are women who've taken it a notch higher. They've not only discovered themselves, but they are also willing to start the work of living a one monthly basis. We send out flyers on our page, The Evolving Woman, and every other uh, platform, plus the alumni are very active in um, you know, marketing that activity. We also have bi-monthly uh, activities. We call them the Hard Talk series. Now, the Hard Talk series, uh, we've chosen to stand out of the crowd and speak about things that actually hold us back from living our full potential. And these are things that we need to demystify. These are difficult conversations like sex, like infertility, like menopause, like uh, the effects of COVID on women, and so many other things. We tend to talk about it from a general perspective and encourage men to join in. But we are also aware that these are things that gag women and stop them from being able to express themselves and be able to live life to their full potential, especially because these are things that are affected by society, our culture. And so we're trying to demystify them and say, you know, we should not hold some of the things that actually hold us back from living life to our full potential. So we have an annual event, A Night with a King, which was the real first uh, event that we had, um, A Night with a King. It's a spiritual event where the women get to encounter God for themselves. 
as an individual person. You come before God, you are the preferred, just like Esther was preferred. Those of you who have known the story of Esther in the Bible, just like Esther was preferred and she was chosen, every woman who comes for a night to the king comes to encounter God from the chosen and preferred perspective. We have quarterly wellness retreats, and these are activities we are going to be having come 2022. These are wellness retreats. We encourage women to go out and talk about issues like self-care and also make commitments or make a pledge to themselves. What are you going to do about your health? What are you going to do about your relationships? What are you going to do about your environment? What are you going to do about your career? There's so many issues that we women need to deal with, but we need to make a pledge, more like how you get out and do uh, New Year resolutions. But this is basically to scan through, am I well? Am I emotionally well? Am I physically well? Am I relationally well? We, it's a wellness retreat and it's a two-day event. Uh, we'll also be sharing those with you. Uh, those are open to absolutely any woman that would like to do. We've got Ezra Junior. This is going to be the first time we're going to have the Ezra Junior. We shall be having them during the school holidays. These are three week uh, meetings that we'd like to have with the young girls from 10 to 17. Now, Ezra does 18 onwards. So we'd like to also cover the young girls in their teenage. We've had so many parents calling out and saying, can you help us on that? We say we need to really get ourselves organized. And so that's also one that's in the pipeline. We have the quarterly mission masterminds. Now masterminds are exclusively for the ESA alumni. And this is basically helping them to move forward from discovering yourself now. When you discover yourself, what next? That is coming up with strategic plans on how you would like to actually influence and walk your mission. We also have monthly prayer meetings, and these are out to the public, to any woman who would like to pray. Man is just basically to keep us in check with the Lord. And the last one are just um, activities that exclusively are for ESA alumni, and these, we call them ESA alumni hangout. I will start my discussion on ESA, and ESA is a 10-week self-discovery journey. I love the quotes. I'm just going to share with you a few quotes before I can delve into Ezra. So the first quote is, the greatest discovery in life is self-discovery. Until you find yourself, you will always be someone else. Become yourself. I love that. So if you've not discovered yourself, you're actually not living life to your full potential. You are not living as you should. We also, I also love this quote by Bonnie Jackson Corey. I love it that it says, be who you are and find yourself so you can be your own person. And enjoy life with no regrets. Living your life purpose, because only then can you find meaning and happiness and living a life with no regret. I love the last quote. And the last quote is, the greatest challenge in life is discovering who you are. And the second greatest is being happy with what you find. So what we do in ESA is we encourage people to find out who they are. And everyone is authentically who they are. And we get them to appreciate and sit in their skin and enjoy who they actually are created to be. Sorry about that. So we in ESA, uh, we believe that every woman has got a purpose for why they're here on earth. And if you discover it and you're able to live in it, you will definitely be happy to have lived a worthwhile life. So, um, like I said, this is just a small analogy of what we think um, finding yourself or discovering yourself is all about. We believe that if you, since you've been born, if you've not been able to discover your purpose or affirm it, or find out why you're here, then you're merely surviving, even if you're at the pinnacle of success. 
we've got so many ladies who come into ESA and they have reached the pinnacle of success. They are CEOs, they are EDs. They're asking what next? There must be something more to life than just getting to the top. And so we are saying that before you get to know your purpose, before you get to affirm your purpose, you are merely surviving. And the ESA experience is basically to get you to this point where you are actually at the point of discovering yourself. And after discovering yourself is when you start to thrive and to live. To thrive and to live, it doesn't mean that you have to have all the money in the world. To live and enjoy and live a worthwhile life does not require you to have that success that the world sees as success. It is basically working towards living a worthwhile legacy. So for us in ESA, we believe that the, the period of self-discovery is a period of evolving to your best self. It's a life of passion, of being fully engaged, and also having a meaningful life. You can only have a meaningful life if you're impacting people positively and, and people are able to, to, to you know, have a testimony of what you have done in their life. So it can be communities, it can be individuals, whatever it is, that's what gives you self-fulfillment. So self-awareness, self-reflection, self-knowledge, those are all things that we deal with in this ESA experience. Now, in our ESA, in our ESA uh, program, uh, like I said, it's a 10-week uh, self-discovery journey. However, we have got eight topics that we, we tackle. We tend to dwell a little more on the wounded soul, and that's exactly where we, um, you know, we know that many women are wounded and we cannot rush it. People need to actually identify those wounds that set them back. I will take you through um, each topic one by one, and um, I know that you will identify with yourselves in the different topics, and I believe that this comprehensively helps you to um, discover who you are. So our ESA experience is divided into three segments. The first one is the design of a woman. You get to realize how was I designed? And each of us is a woman by design, but each of us has got a specific uh, design that is only tailor-made to, to you as Pamela. So not everybody can be Pamela. Not everybody can be Diana. Not everybody can be Primera. Primera is just one of a kind. And therefore, we get to understand what is my design. Um, the first discussion we, uh, so we do design, we then go into the depth of a woman. The depth of a woman, um, and these are, you know, getting to know yourself beyond your mask. What are those things that are deep about you that you need to discover? And we talk about things like wounded soul, sex and sensibility, traps on the way. What are the traps that you've actually fallen into or are likely to fall into that have been laid out for the woman? And then the last segment is the daring you. The daring you is what is that one thing that you can be able to do as Pamela to stand out of the crowd and leave a worthwhile legacy? I'll go through each of them just to give you a snippet of uh, what it's all about. So the first one, which is the depth, sorry, the first one, which is the design of a woman. Every woman is designed tender, mellow, beautiful, curvy, name it all. And we, we, we begin by just defining what is femininity. We get to celebrate femininity because we believe it's a gift to us from God. So we are talking about what is authentic femininity. I will take you through um, the five different um, aspects of a woman. I will, I will take you through it towards the end. And that's what we capitalize on. Um, and then we have the roles of a woman. So the roles of a woman is standing on all four. We believe that a woman has got to be a graceful queen, as you must be able to influence outside your home. You must be a strong natural. And I am I'm excited that G4G is doing exactly that. How are you nurturing? Not only your children, but how are you nurturing the ladies around you? How are you nurturing the young girls around you? How are you nurturing your workmates? How are you mentoring? How are you coaching? Every woman is inherently a natural. 
So how have you harnessed that power within you? And then the third one is we must be loyal companions. We are created for companionship. And if you're not a companion, just know you're inherently one and you can make a good companion. So we talk about companionship. The last one is a faithful sister. Every woman thrives in a sisterhood. And we cannot pretend that or ignore the fact that every woman is inherently created to thrive in a sisterhood. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my phone off. Someone is insisting on calling me. So every woman thrives in a sisterhood. And sometimes we find that some of us are hurt or wounded in any of the four areas and therefore we're not thriving in the four areas. And so what we do in ESA is to say, what is that thing that could have gone wrong that you need to rectify? Because women are created uh, inherently to stand on all fours and it must be done with the power of intentionality. So if you're not a loyal companion, what has gone wrong that you need to deal with? If you're not a faithful sister, what is it that is not going right? If you're not a graceful queen, what is it that went wrong? And if you're not a strong nurturer, then how come you are actually created feminine? You need to embrace all four. Uh, the next topic, which is part of the design of a woman, is lady on a mission. Now, this is discovering your purpose here on earth, identifying. Uh, we, we always tell the women that your identity should ultimately be in your mission. Some of us, our identity is in being Mama Gundi or Mrs. Gundi or CEO or whatever it is. But when any of those titles is yanked away from you, what do you remain with? And in ESA, we believe that your identity should be hinged on your mission. Because that's you on a mission is basically the discussion on purpose, discovering your purpose, discovering why you're here on earth, discovering why God created you. And uh, we believe, like Mark Twain, that the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. So you need to find out why you were actually born. And that's why Lady on a Mission is a very important topic. Getting into the depth of a woman helps us to understand that we as women walk around with so many masks. When someone meets me, they probably think, oh, well, she looks like a happy woman. Everything is well put together. Or you can be judged by small little things, you know? But we walk around with masks. And yet we are wounded in many ways. We've got so many things that we are hiding. We've got so many things that we actually are failing to deal with these issues. Man is wounded in one or another. Some of you might say, but I don't think I am wounded. Well, as long as you've lived through life, you might have wounded at your, been wounded at your workplace, been wounded by your parents, been wounded by your spouse, been wounded by a boyfriend along the way, and now you're married to your husband, but you're still wounded by your boyfriend. It's basically just to check and say, what is that thing that can hinder me from living my, my life to my full potential? And we realize that our wounds inform a lot of our decisions. Somebody is always living as if they're living or as if their husband is living because their father left them on who young. And you're still wounded by your father's decisions. And you need to put a finger and say, okay, it's no wonder I'm always doing this because when our father left us, that actually changed my life completely. We've got issues like sex and sensibility and sex and sensibility is basically talk about, are you in control or are you in charge of your sexuality? Do you appreciate that you're actually a sexual being? We are inherently sexual beings. Even if you're celibate, you are a sexual being. So we are saying, are you in charge of your sexuality? If you're married, do you also have a 50-50 chance to actually um, initiate or uh, be in control of that area of your life? Or are you a puppet, a sexual object for somebody? We basically demystify this whole sex issue and encourage women to embrace it, embrace, embrace their, uh, their sexuality. 
So the last bit is traps on the way. We are saying, are you conscious of the traps on the way? There are many traps that are laid out for the women. We've got uh, money traps like debt. Um, you know, you could be, you could, you could fall in a trap in an organization where money has actually been laid out there, and you actually have access. How much? I mean, what are your values? How are you? Um, are you controlling yourself when it comes to issues or things? like money the other could be um i'm trying to get the right word integrity you know you might not have that integrity and those are traps that are laid out for us so are you actually a woman of integrity are you able to discover a trap and know this is one i could easily and potentially fall in and what can i do to actually um evade such traps so that is the depth of a woman so the third segment, which is the dare, you know, daring bit of a woman. And that little picture you see out there is if anyone came dressed like that in a meeting on a Monday, they would definitely stand out. What are we saying about uh, standing out from the crowd? Uh, We're talking about the lady code. Those are the values that a woman of honor is supposed to have. What is the lady code? Do you have a set of values that you stand by? Can someone say, you know, when it comes to integrity, Pamela is known for integrity. When it comes to being on time, you know, keeping time, is that a value that Pamela has? When it comes to uh, treating people right, you know, what are your values? I like that quote by Fra, uh, Jackie Fresca, Fresco. She says, Perhaps the most significant thing a person can know about herself is to understand her own system of value. Almost everything we do is a reflection of our value system. Yeah, You will tell every woman and their value system by the things that they do. So the last one, the last topic, which is the eighth topic is embracing significance. Now in embracing significance, Significance, we say, okay, what's the difference between significance and success? Everyone is working hard to be successful. And being successful is actually a very, very good thing for everyone to attain. However, as a woman who is here for a purpose and for a reason, we cannot afford to just be successful. We must be significant. And significance is what are you doing to, 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 to influence the world around you? You know that you're the salt and the light of the earth. What are you doing to influence the people around you? We believe that every one of us is a one of a lifetime kind of girl. I like it in Luganda when they say, Chibudomu, you know, something that can only be beheld by once, you know, it's like a shooting star. So if I'm here and you have not encountered me, there is something you have missed in this world and it can only be provided by me because there can never be another me. So we are asking every woman to find out what is that thing that God has put you here for and how can you embrace the significance unapologetically. We tend to be very, um, we tend to be very subtle about life, modest, we don't want to stand out because society has said women must be quiet, they must not speak out. But what's the area God is calling you to stand out? We believe that every as a woman must be strong and supportive. So like I said at the beginning, we always start with the five, um, the five attributes of an authentic, an authentic woman. We teach that as these are our, indicator, our indicators to actually see how much we have been able to attain when it comes to living life to our full potential. Every woman must learn to stand securely. Every woman must stand, learn to stand securely. And therefore, one of the things we teach is get rid of those things that keep you insecure. What are the things that keep you insecure? Are you in a relationship you're not happy to be in? Are you in a job that is embarrassing to you and maybe the values actually are not the values you want to uh, portray out there? Are you in a company of people that keep you insecure? Are you in toxic relationships? Every woman must be stand securely in order to live life to their full potential. 
We also say every woman must walk in purity. Walking in purity, many of us think about sex uh, when we think about purity, but we teach about purity of heart. The Baganda will say, how clean is your heart? And that comes from a point of insecurity. That comes from a point of appreciating that uh, you know, people out there deserve the best as well. We have influencing graciously as another attribute that we use as an indicator for living life to the full potential. So are you influencing graciously? It's possible for us to be just are you influencing? It's, a, it's an area that many of us are really working on. And I must say for some of us, who are Bachiga and really inherently Bachiga, that's an area where, you know, we are learning to be gracious influencers. Sorry about the children in the neighborhood, that's part of being a woman. And so we must learn to love deeply. Are we loving deeply? Loving deeply means loving without reservation. Most times we love with reservation because we are insecure because we've had wounds in the past, we've been hurt by somebody before. And it's not just about romantic love, but are you loving your workmates deeply? Do you call your friend to ask, you didn't come to work today, what is going on? How can I be of help? So every authentic woman must be able to love deeply. And lastly, we are saying every day of our lives is working towards living a worthwhile legacy. So make it count. So whatever it is that you did today, is it something that somebody, you leave a mark on somebody's life and they will say, you know, on that day, so-and-so did this for me and it changed my life for good. So are we living a worthwhile legacy? So in summary, Eza is about, so an Eza woman is one who finds their path, that's their purpose, their why, and chooses to follow it is one who discovers the truth and chooses to believe it. When we talk about the truth, that's one of the things we keep bringing out over and over through Ezra, is that there's a lot of false, uh, false doctrines, false teachings, false cultures, false beliefs that are out there that we have believed over, over, over time. And they actually, um, they hold us back from living life to our full potential. So when you discover the truth about you, are you actually ready to believe it and choosing to walk that walk? So lastly, I'm just going to bring to you some few testimonies of women who've been through EZA. That beautiful lady you see there is called Delphine Tumusime Mudisha. She is the former country director of Raising Voices. This is her testimony. She said, my EZA journey was a turning point in my life. I understood and embraced femininity in a liberating yet empowering way. I met strong women of God, listened to their wisdom and allowed them to nurture me, comfort me, challenge me and minister to me. They received me with love, warmth and genuine concern. They held my hand as I confronted my brokenness, long held limiting habits, theories of vulnerability, deep seated woundedness and shackles of self pity. I am now an elevated woman, a mission led woman, standing tall in my femininity proud to be a woman, happy to embrace myself. I've embarked on a new journey and I'm not settling for mere success, but walking in significance. Transcending every barrier with gentleness, decency, humility, kindness, dedication, fiercely depending on God to illuminate my path, my heart and soul, taking on my mission to nurturing greatness in others, it into greatness. That is Delphine Mugisha. Now Delphine is our new director for ESA and she's actually come back to give back to the women and we are celebrating her. So the second person is Aida Mavumezi Chinawa and she joined ESA. She said, before I joined EZA, I had suffered rejection by my spouse, my family, friends, and business associates. I had suffered major financial setbacks and confidence loss. Since I joined EZA, I got my joy, confidence, and boldness back. I gained back my value. And 
and significance that has propelled me, propelled me to new opportunities and possibilities. I owe my future and significance to Ezra, to my friend who introduced me to Ezra, and even more to God who granted me the second chance of life. Ezra was an eye opening for deep sisterhood. I am eternally grateful. So that is Aida Mabomezi Chinawa. She's an integrity sales specialist for King Solutions Limited. We have Petra Mwesiga, Noid Petra. And this is her testimony. She said, after the loss of three of my siblings in a period of under five years, I was completely devastated. And I thought my life was meaningless. After a month of grief and feeling like I had no purpose in life, I joined Eza and dealt with my woundedness. Eza guided me through all stages of grief and allowed me to go through it without being judged. The icing on the cake was also meeting some amazing ladies and making lifelong friendships. Eza saved my life and I wouldn't trade my time there for anything. So this is Moisigua Petra. So Petra right now is our accountant and she's also giving back to the women. We have Emma Mogisha, who is now the ED of Stanbic Bank. And she said, I was privileged to attend ESA season one. We, we actually now at season six, she attended season one. And as a busy working mom and mom, working wife and mom, I find that I take care of everyone else and often forget myself, which I think we all do. Ezra gave me the space to rethink me for two hours every week in the company of sisters on a mission. This space helped me reevaluate, unlearn, learn, and be intentional about the woman I am. The highlight was confirming my purpose and being secure in it. That's Emma Mogisha. So those are just a few. So far, we have had 184 women going through Ezra in five seasons. The coming season, we are hoping and praying that we shall be able to get to 200 women. Uh, and this, this is because the women who've done as the alumni have come back to graciously give back to the women as facilitators. So we actually have a big facilitator base, thanks to the ESA alumni. So who are our targets? We are targeting three different groups. As you can see, those are our last princesses that went through ESA in season six. Um, so and they are facilitators. You can see Maureen Otiek in the back, Rosemary on the side. Uh, those are the facilitators for the princesses. So we have got three groups and these are 18 to 24 who are called the princesses. Why do we target the princesses? We are hoping that we can mentor them to make the right choices in life so that they can live um, a generally live well to their full potential. So the queens are 25 to 50. This is the group where most of us lie. And many of these women are, you know, working towards attaining success. We are saying, okay, so there is more to life than just attaining success. What are you doing about significance? What are you doing about leaving a worthwhile legacy? So this is challenging and also correcting many things that have gone wrong. Whereas the princesses, we are hoping and praying that they will not go through uh, most of the things that many of us have been through and our hope and prayer is that they will make the right decisions and be guided in the right direction. So the Queens, these are 25 to 50, like I said, and we are correcting a lot of things that have happened along the way, but also helping them to get perspective towards life, like from whence forth, how can I live a meaningful and fulfilling life? And then we've got the Queen Mothers, 51 plus. 51 plus, um, well, the 51 plus are the women who have generally seen life. Life has happened. Many of them have gotten positions on life and said, you know, this is where my life is. This is where I'm doomed to. This is where destiny has thrown me. And many of them are now carrying the burden of grandchildren. They're carrying the, their children as a burden. We basically teach the women that they are stewards and not owners of children. And therefore, you know, many of them are continuing to be bogged down by the things that are not going right in their children's lives. We are saying you can actually still make a difference in this life and find your purpose and leave it out and leave a worthwhile legacy. So this is an exciting group. We've had one group so far in ESA season five, and my mother was one of them. We had women ranging from 51 and the eldest I think was 73 who was my mother 
it was an exciting time just seeing the women find happiness and joy in just talking about their lives and they are willing to actually come back and mentor. So we even have a mentoring program that we are planning for the queen mothers to be able to mentor us and just teach us about the things, um, the lessons, the life lessons that they have, they have um, come up with through their lives. So these are the three groups that we target. So in short, this is a journey every woman must take. As long as you're called a woman, this is a journey that you must take. So we are targeting also people who are living abroad in the diaspora because ESA is 90% on Zoom. 90% on Zoom. Like we said, ESA is a 10-week journey. And um, in the 10 weeks, we do not study every day. We study on Mondays for two hours only. Mondays for two hours from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And that's a time when generally the entire world is awake. And so we, we've been having people from all over the world. We've had people from Canada, from the States, from the UK, from all over the world and all over Africa. So encourage your friends abroad to join um, as a this coming season. So our midterm, we usually have one midterm retreat, which is done in the small groups. When you get into EZA, you are put into little groups uh, that either you come in as a tribe, meaning you come in as a group of friends and you get to do the experience together, or you are put into a group of not more than 10 women. And that's the group that you let, literally do EZA with. Those are the people you get to be vulnerable with, those are the people that you get to work with. And we hope that this can actually be a sisterhood that you can carry on for life. We've had so many uh, women are always going out, having fun, Christmas parties, checking on each other, home visits. Um, this has come out of the little groups that they did as a, uh, together with. And then we've got one end term retreat. So at the end of the 10 weeks, we've got an end term retreat, which is a physical one. We get to meet. And then we do a virtual one for those who are abroad or those who cannot be able to make it. But we get to finally see everybody in one place, excuse me, at the end term retreat, which is a face-to-face -face event. And then on the Monday, after we have done the, 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 the end term retreat, which is our graduation, we get to have a commissioning ceremony where we get a phenomenal woman to speak into the lives of the women who have graduated. So that's what our 10 weeks self-discovery journey looks like. Um, some of you will be asking, how much is it? It's only 600,000 shillings for the 10 weeks. It's approximately $164, um, depending on the exchange rate at the time. And then for the first 20 women, which we have entertained to pay fully, we've given them an early bird opportunity, which is 50,000 shillings, 500,000 shillings. You get to save 100,000 shillings. And any woman who pays before December 15th, pays fully before December 15, gets to pay 550. So some of you might say, I can't afford to pay all the money at once. Yes, we actually do installments. You are free to pay in installments that can be discussed with our administrator and you get to spread it out uh, in the 10 weeks. So what does it include? Uh, the 600,000, like I said, it includes, we've got a kit that we give you. It includes the two retreats and it also, um, we, we then continue to just work with you on this journey of finding your purpose. I would like to say thank you. If you would like to ask any questions, kindly do post them in the chat. You can feel free to also put up your hands and ask the questions over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the session. Uh, I have learned a lot. I have a question, but it's like a session question. It's not really about the program. So I have a question. How do you get out of that situation where you can't see your future because you did something against God's will? You did something that? Against God's will. Wow. <laughs> the one thing that we teach about in Ezra is the grace of God. 
you know, we, we were trained along the way, especially with depending on where you grew up, if you grew up in a very religious setting where they, it's like God was this big old man with gray hair with a whip waiting to hit you. No, he's given us a chance to have many chances. So in Ezra, we teach about uh, God's grace. There's always a, a, a way you can start out. And even if it is choosing the wrong spouse, for example, some of us might say, okay, I can't get out of this. We say, how can you live that to your full potential in those circumstances? I don't believe that it is, there's anything that's a life sentence that anyone can do in this world. So your future can be corrected and that can be part of the story that makes the big story that, that, that's beautiful at the end of the day. Have I answered you? Yes, you have. Uh, I have a question uh, from Viva. She's saying, how do I get into in contact with you? Okay. So I'm just going to put my numbers in the chat room. Uh, just give me a second. I will. I will also be able to send everybody an email. Um, uh, with like a flyer with all the details. Okay, so those are my numbers. Anybody can call uh, just to have a chat. Any other question? Yes, I have another question from Elizabeth. She's asking, mm -hmm. how do you deal with the guilt that you sometimes feel when the kids or spouse are driving you mad and just want uh, me time or when life is just overwhelming and you need to remove yourself from the company of others. So those are some of the things we teach about in our wellness retreats. We said you must schedule me time. And me time means that you must find out what works for you. Some of us really enjoy going to the spa and get treated to whatever it is. But for others, it might just simply mean you get up and go away somewhere and just sit by the lake for a day. Every woman must sit down and schedule time for them to be alone. Because you cannot give your best if your cup is not full. Your cup must be full. It's one of the things we are always teaching. How full is your cup? Your cup must be full. Sometimes we tend to teach women self-love and they are worried. Isn't it bordering with selfishness? No, self-love comes from a point where we are actually told that you cannot love people the way you love. You cannot love. If you can't love yourself, then you won't know how to love people. And that's why God tells us to love others the way we love ourselves. So self-love and choosing to actually give yourself time to recuperate is a priority every woman must give themselves. Is that there's no guilt in it. Please do schedule it beginning of the year. Just know I go away for a retreat with myself every time. Um, let me just read this. Sylvia says, thanks a lot, Pamela. Do you have a website, YouTube channel and the like? where we can get more of those testimonies. Yes, we do have a Facebook page, Evolving Woman. We are currently restructuring. We are going to, uh, we, we've just hired, we are hiring a, a, a social media consultant who is going to just put us on all the media platforms. Hopefully by the end of this week, you'll find us absolutely everywhere. We've got a, a YouTube channel that's not been very active, but that is something that we are working on. For now, if you want to read everything and everything about us, just get to Facebook and read about us on the Evolving Woman page. Um, that's where we are for now. So thank you, Emanuela. Any more questions? I don't see any more questions. Okay. There's a question on whether a Muslim can join um, in the Q and A. Pardon? There's a question as to whether a woman, a Muslim, can join. Ah, okay. okay. It's in the Q and A section. Yeah. Yes, we have Muslims. We've had every season. We've had one Muslim at least, and they are still with us up to today. They are. Yeah, you, you know, we are uh, a Bible-based 
organization, that's the truth that we believe. However, whatever truth we believe is actually in the Quran as well. So we believe the different things that, you know, anything that can make anybody's life better, we do believe. We do not front salvation or get to preach to people to get saved or whatever. We just want the woman to discover herself, discover what God intended for her. So yes, we've got lots of Muslims. We've got a Muslim who's actually come up with an, um, a lovely program after Ezra called The Bridge. She's called Amina Yahaya. Um, Amina Yahaya is now, uh, she's come up with The Bridge after discovering her purpose. The Bridge is an organization that helps women and uh, families with premature babies and premature babies, just standing with them and helping them. That came from her own experience. So yes, we do stand with Muslims. Um, Angela Tugume says, do you have sessions for wounded for the wound, wound, wounded woman that is going around hurting and wounding everyone else? Yes, those are some of the things we talk about. We talk about you being wounded, um, you know, like they say, hurting, hurt people, hurt other, keep hurting other people. And so we keep on talking about what are you also doing out there that's not graciously influencing the people around you? Those are things that we also highlight. Thank you, Angela, for raising that. Um, Rita says, how would you advise someone that has considered leaving the job because, well, she never finished it? Uh, because it's not fulfilling your, her purpose. Because it's not fulfilling her purpose. Well, one of the things we are talking to women is, is that something you can do while you're working, employed, uh, like to start, for example, if my purpose is empowering women, yeah? I'm, I've also had to phase out of my businesses to try and work on evolving women because I believe in evolving women is where I'm most effective and, and I enjoy the work most. So what you do is if you believe that you need to leave your job, it must be well planned so that you don't find yourself in a ditch where you're depressed only. You must plan it. We believe that there should be a smooth way that one can get out of it. And those are some of the things we talk about in our masterminds. We talk about how much have you saved to be able to slide into your purpose for those who want to go into it full time. Others say I can work elsewhere and use my financing to be able to live out my purpose. So whichever way, whichever model you choose to do, find a way of uh, starting from wherever you can. You can start while you're employed. You might never actually leave employment, but I'm sure that people who are doing G4G are also fully employed elsewhere. So it's really um, something that you can do on the side, but also if you feel you must leave your job, like me, I just knew I needed to get out of employment. I felt like I was not employable and has led me to where I am today. Thank God I was able to discover that early. Yeah. Any I more have questions? Question. I do. I am a wounded woman and I do mm -hmm. not I do not hurt others at the end of the day, but I keep hurting myself. Everything I do instead hurts me. How do I heal this or get better? Yeah, some of those are some of the things that we deal with with Ezra. And I will definitely encourage you to come and join because in one session now, I can't give you the how to. We actually don't even have things like six steps to feeling better, no. Once you discover yourself and discover that woundedness, we then say, can you go back to what we call the basement? We have an experience we call the basement or the, we can we call it the iceberg theory where the women go back down and dig deep to where did this woundedness start? What's that belief system that I've held that has kept me wounded? I'll just give you an example that, you know, there are some ladies out there who've had children probably out of wedlock and they feel like it's, it's a lifetime dent. And we, we, we just get them to go back to the value system. Like who said that? Who say that because you had a child out of wedlock, you are doomed for life? Then you get to question the source of where it came from. Because many of these things are just cultural things that try to keep us in check. But in the long run, they hurt us, they, you know, pull us down. But we are saying now that you have found yourself already in it, how can you get out of it victorious? There is always a way out. And some of it is dealing grace, giving yourself grace. What does the word of God say about you in that situation? I mean, for example, I am divorced. 
God hates divorce is what the Bible says, but God does not hate the divorcee. He hates divorce because it disorganizes his plan for families and destabilizes the peace of families. However, he does not hate the divorcee. So you cannot continue carrying that label around and feeling like you're a failure. No, it's just part of your journey. You can pick yourself up and life can, you can get back on, 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 on track. Um, next question, please. So the other question is really, really nice. Um, someone is asking if they can sponsor someone to attend this session. So I have typed in your your contact and uh, mine, and then they can reach out and say, yeah, it's about if they can sponsor someone to attend the session. I think that's really, really great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh something from Sharon. Thank you, Pamela, for that revelation about having to leave your job because you found and believed your purpose was in Eza. I have had to make the decision and walk away, walk out last year. The toxicity was too much and I couldn't even wait to save up or live in a phased manner. Initially, I thought it was a foolish decision, but in doing what I'm doing now, empowering women and youth legally, economically through the law and agriculture, I feel really excited and fulfilled. So this is what, uh, this is really to just say thank you. Sharon, thank you so much, Sharon, for that. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much. Whichever way, you must live life to your full potential because there's a lot hidden in you. There's a lot hidden in each and every one of us, regardless of character. Some people might say people are very vocal, yeah, and just laid back. What can I do? Guess what, there's a place for you. And I'd like to encourage the woman out there who's like myself, the one the world calls a too much woman. Eh, eh, I think I'm such a, huh? hey, just too much. There is a place for you in society where God has put everything together. Your character, your experiences, everything nicely padded together to make the you that has got to influence the world out there. So look at every experience, good and bad. They actually do make a lot of sense at the end of the day. They do make a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Pamela, for spending your lunch hour with us. And thank you so much to the ladies who showed up to spend the lunch hour with us. Thank you so much. You will all receive an email uh, from me this afternoon from G4G. It will have the information from about Pamela that you may contact her, a flyer, and all the details you may need. Um, I see a hand up, I don't know. I think she has dropped off, um, but thank you so much. Uh, really, you'll all receive it, um, yes.